What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Well, looks like you don't have to go and get toilet paper anymore. And y'all got to stop trying to do the same thing that y'all did during the pandemic when y'all was raiding Costco and Walmart and all of these places. And you thought that you was going to run out of paper towel and baby wipes and, all, and condoms and plan B's and all of that stuff. Don't worry. It's all coming on in. It's going to come on in because the longshoremen agreed to a temporary contract. Now, I'm going to break that down for you guys so that you'll tr truly understand it from a C student's perspective. But essentially, uh, the longshoremen agreed to up to January 15th. Now, I'm going to share with you why this is important, why that date is important, and how politics played a huge role in getting this temporary deal done. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump right into the article. Uh, cur courtesy of the Washington Post, it says, the striking dock workers reached a tentative agreement with port operators on Thursday for a 62% wage increase and have extended their contract through January 15th to bargain over the remaining issues. Meaning, uh, the longshoreman was seeking around a 77% wage increase over six years, which equated to the equivalent of about 12.8% per year. Roughly, I'm a C student, so don't kill me over my math, but that's around what it equated to. And the companies were at about 55%. So they had already negotiated over the last six months up to 55%. They met somewhere in the middle at about 62% uh, of a wage increase over six years. So the base salary for the majority of these longshoremen is somewhere around 80 to 90,000 and probably increased to a little over $100,000 a year. But with overtime, a lot of them make well over $200,000, $300,000 a year, including the crane operators. And that's the thing that a lot of people were complaining about. They was like, hey, listen, if they don't want these jobs, we can bring in the migrants. And everybody started turning on the unions, especially when they started talking about shutting down the United States of America and we started having this hurricane. Now, when I seen Ron DeSantis come out and he was like, hey, wait a minute. We need supplies over there in Asheville, North Carolina. They suffering. We got to rebuild. We need, you know, things to still come into our ports. That started to become a problem. That's when they started to dig, dig into the, lean, the the union leader boss's finance. Hey, man, this guy make $900,000 a year. He got yachts. Elon Musk started jumping in. He jumped in with a tweet or two. Um, they said that he was living this lavish lifestyle, driving around Bentleys and all of this stuff. So it started to become personal. But the longshoreman was arguing over several different things. And the reason that this is only extended through January 15th to solve for the rest of the issues, which primarily remains around automation, and we're going to get into that in a second, is because they don't want the union to be weakened and they don't want their jobs to go away. And so what they're doing is they're fighting for the future of their children, especially considering that you only have to have a high school diploma or GED to become a longshoreman, which isn't a bad thing. But then people are saying, hey, listen, I wish I could make that type of money. I wish I could run that type of bag up. Well, go and do it. Uh, goes on to say the deal suspends a four-day strike that threatened to disrupt the U.S. economy less than five weeks, five weeks before the presidential election, meaning that this was important to the Biden administration. It was very, very important to the Biden administration and more importantly to the Kamala Harris administration, A, because Biden didn't want his legacy to be left with a strike while we're only five weeks away from the presidential election, which Initially, he was supposed to be the running mate. You know, he was supposed to be the one that was winning. And he was supposed to be seeking a sec second term, and they pushed him out. Shout out to Nancy Pelosi and Kamala Harris. Uh, but more importantly, how would this have crippled Kamala Harris's campaign? Because it would have fed more into what J.D. Vance and largely Trump have been saying is, look, with all of these issues that's going on right now, especially with the hurricane, FEMA ran out of money, giving the people $750, with all of these issues that's happening right now, how would this affect you even worse when we say that, hey, they still in office and inflation is going to be spiraling out of control? They cost in the American economy estimated $4.2 to $5 billion a day. It's going to take them a week for every day that they strike, and even though they only struck for four days. Biden didn't want to exercise his executive action and say, hey, y'all got to go back to work for the next 90 days. And so it had just been becoming absolutely positively a bad situation for everybody involved because it had become a major talking point of Republicans. They started to ramp up attacks on that front, include myself, yours truly. And Democrats were starting to reel because they was anticipating people not being able to afford anything 
anymore on top of the inflation that they experienced over the last three and a half years. So they wanted to get this deal done. Goes on to say the International Longshoremen's Association, the ILA, that's their abbreviation, had been seeking substantial wage increases, which they got. You start high and you negotiate low. Uh, and a ban on the introduction of additional automation at 36 East and Gulf Coast ports. And that was the main sticking point. And that's the reason why they said, listen, we only extended this over until January 15th. After the election, we know that the president, whoever it is, is when is going to take office in January. I think January 20th or something like that. November election, we can push this through that may, that, we, that way that this is a non-issue. We ain't got to worry about all of the attacks. We ain't got to worry about all of the ads from the Republican side, side saying, hey, these people don't know how to get a deal done. So this largely works in the Democrats' favor. And I would assume, especially since um, Harold Daggett, who is the union boss leader, and he started calling Biden out and said, hey, Biden abandoned us after the Baltimore port situation. And we had to come out of our own pocket to make sure our own people were taken care of. And he had no money to pay the people that was laid off, but they took care of the boats. When he started talking, I believe that phone call started to be made. And so Harold Daggett, they started digging into him. They started digging into his finances. People started, it was almost like a, a campaign started to be waged against the union itself. You see what I'm saying? I started to see TikToks and Instagrams go viral of them showing automation at the Long Beach port and how they was going to be replacing their jobs. And I still believe that automation is going to be the key. I don't think that the wages was the heavy lifting. The wages wasn't a thing because usually what companies do is they innovate, right? You, raise, you raise wages, we raise prices, pass them over to the consumer, and then we automate you out of a job by including AI and, and having less liability, less lawsuits, less issues, less insurance payouts. 17 people, according to the ILA boss, died last year on the porch. They said that it's an incredibly dangerous job. And so, you know, when you think about the level of, of issues that was starting to be risen as a result of all of these ports being shut down, over there on Long Beach, they were saying, hey, y'all can redirect y'all stuff over here. Truck drivers were starting to complain because they was like, hey, you affecting our livelihood. Grocery stores were starting to stock up because they was preparing for a long strike. And so it was in everybody's best interest to get this done and now you, you are stuck with a whole load of toilet paper because you wanted to load up on it and you thought that it was going to be the same thing that happened as a result of the pandemic. You ain't stock up on vegetables. You ain't stock up on none of that canned goods. You stock up on toilet paper because you ain't learned your lesson the first time. But I'm going to keep you guys up to date on what's happening with this, of course, as usual, as it comes in. I will give it out to you. I am the first person to report, to report on it. Make sure you subscribe to the, to the channel. Also, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more as far as this deal as we get the details on the Millionaire Morning Show tomorrow. So that's going to be absolutely awesome. Make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description. Also, T. Chanley, 40% off your first order, 20% off of life. Shout out to T. Chanley. And come and kick it with me, man. Come and kick it with me. Discount code and time. Make sure you get, get your tickets to the show. After hours tonight, we're getting it popping. I love y'all. I see y'all. Let me know what y'all think inside of the comments. Do you think that this is a good deal? And as I get more details and I reveal more to y'all, I will be doing more live streams and I'll be dropping more videos to keep you guys informed. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace.